Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's episode, the question of the day is, what is the vagus nerve? The vagus nerve is pretty hot topic when we talk about like yoga and meditation and mind-body connection, but a lot of people don't actually understand what it is. And so I really want to just give a good overview of what the vagus nerve is and what it does, and maybe just a few ways of how we can actually activate it and, and help your ability um, to kind of have that rest and digest. So the vagus nerve is the main nerve that governs our autonomic nervous system, the part that is the rest and digest nervous system. And so we have... In the autonomic nervous system, we have the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight, the one where you want to like run away from a bear if there is, or if there's a lot of stress in your life. And the other one is the parasympathetic or the rest and digest nervous system. Of this parasympathetic nervous system, there is a few nerves and there's a lot of different connections within the brain that help to modulate it and govern it but the vagus nerve is the main nerve that is going to receive information and help to uh, give or give efferent, give motor output to help that rest and digest nervous system happen. And so what the vagus nerve does is it really just calms us down. And so uh, let's go to a picture first. And so I can, this is one of my favorite pictures. And we'll just show you what here is, is going on. And so this all in yellow is the vagus nerve. And it basically comes out of the lower brainstem. So right um, at the base of your skull, um, just, just inside the lower brainstem, it comes out of the medulla. And it goes to many places. It first goes to your throat goes to your pharynx and basically the back of your throat so you can say ah so whenever the doctor asks you to say ah uh, he's testing the vagus nerve um, it also goes to your ear and so just like the tragus and like the the outer portion of the ear here it's going to go there and it receives sensory information from there and this is where we can activate it with some electrical stimulation right on the ear then it comes down and it goes into the thoracic cavity where your lungs and your heart are. And so here it's going to decrease your heart rate. It helps to decrease your heart rate, relax you, calm you down. Um, with the lungs, it's probably going to cause just a little bit of vasal constriction. We don't really need, uh, sorry, a bronchoconstriction. We don't really need a lot of uh, activity in the lungs if we're calm and restful. Then it also goes down the esophagus here, and it's gonna to go to the stomach, it goes to your liver, it goes to your pancreas, your spleen, and then it goes to your colon and your small intestines. And it goes to every part except for this descending, the last part of the colon. Um, it also goes to your kidneys, uh, but it doesn't go to the last part of the colon, and it doesn't go to your rectum, it doesn't go to the sex hormones that, or the sex um, organs down here and for your bladder. Um, that's just, that's taken up by, by some other nerves. And so this vagus nerve, because it's so long and big, they call it the wanderer. Um, vagus in Latin means wanderer. And so kind of wanders through your organs, through your autonomic nervous system. And so it collects a ton of information from, from what's going on in your viscera or in your organs. And so it really gives a good representation to your brain, your central nervous system, what is going on at an organ system level, which is so important because this happens involuntarily. It happens every single day, every minute, it happens when you're sleeping. And we need to know, our brain needs to know what's going on in our organ systems so we can better control our ability to process food, digest food, to process our heart rate, whether we need to um, be moving really fast or have it calm down and, and have less stress, less anxiety, and just kind of calm everything. And so that's the vagus nerve. 
okay? Um, goes to a lot of places, like I said. And let's then go to just one article here. So this article is just a little review from 2018. Um, it's called The Vagus Nerve and Its Interface with the Microbiota Gut-Brain Axis. Basically meaning how the vagus nerve interacts with our microbiome in our gut and how that then connects to the brain and ability for us to understand or learn what's going on, okay? Um, and so let's just go right down to the picture. Okay, so up here, the central nervous system is your brain. And this central nervous system um, needs to know what is going on. Your brain needs to know what is going on from your autonomic nervous system. Right here is the vagus nerve. And it's connecting to right here your digested epithelial layer or your gut. And then inside your gut, you have your microbiome, you have different uh, particles that are being released from your microbiome, you have uh, food particles. And so um, let me just go the CAN is the central autonomic network. The central autonomic network is that autonomic nervous system that um, is mostly in the central nervous system, so we can correlate and um, so we can understand and we can make good output so that we can get our involuntary autonomic nervous system functioning properly. Um, the GEC, these are uh, endothelial cells uh, and, and endocrine cells. And so these are cells that are going to release little hormones locally so it can help digest our foods. Okay. And so the big thing here, though, is this vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is 80% afferent. Afferent means sensory. So it's bringing in a lot of information from the gut to tell the brain, hey, this is what's going on in the gut, whether there's inflammation, whether there's food there that needs to be digested, whether there needs to be proper absorption. Um, are there pathogens? Are there, is there inflammation that's occurring because um, you have a virus or an infection in your gut? And this, this afferent nerve is, this vagus nerve is bringing all that in. Oh, another one is your microbiome releases neurotransmitters like serotonin, your happy hormone, dopamine, the hormone more for like the neurotransmitter for reward, um, norepinephrine, which is more of like stress and alertness. And so all this can go up and travel through this afferent vagus nerve. There's a lot of fibers that are, that are telling our brain what's going on with the gut. And then there's only 20% of it that's going the opposite way, the efferent portion, the motor portion. But even though it's only 20%, this is still an important portion because the vagus nerve can come down and it can do two things. It can, these little negative signs are inhibit. So it can inhibit local inflammation that could be occurring within the microbiome. It can inhibit intestinal permeability or leaky gut. It can help heal um, the leaky gut. And so that's super important because this vagus nerve is kind of this central integral proportion to what's going on in the gut and then how can the vagus nerve actually fix it. Um, and then there also is this like vagus nerve independent pathway. And this is more through the blood that goes through based on different hormones. But so we know that we can activate the vagus nerve through our intestine, through our gut. So that means, you know, having a good microbiome, eating well and not eating inflammatory foods because that can help activate that vagus nerve and, and settle it so it doesn't need to necessarily come back and, and control inflammation. Those things are really important. Um, and then there are other ways that we can activate our vagus nerve, all to help kind of lessen that stress, less, or get us in that rest and digest mode. And these are things like gargling, right? Activating that palate. So gargling, humming are good one, whistling. All those that are gonna kind of activate your palate um, and to promote activity in that, in that vagus nerve, in that lower brainstem, that rest and digest system. Um, some other things are deep breathing, slow breathing. So breathing where you only have like six breaths in a minute. That's like five seconds in, five seconds out in through your nose, out through your teeth, or your mouth, um, where it's just nice and slow. 
that deep, slow breathing really helps to lower that heart rate and activates the vagus nerve because we are actually getting organ movement. When, when you breathe and you breathe in your diaphragm, your belly goes out and your organs are moving. When your organs move, that movement is activating that vagus nerve. And so that can really help just kind of slow down um, the system, slow down the heart rate. Uh, then we have meditation, we have yoga, um, we have what I alluded to in the beginning, when you can stimulate the ear, um, you can stimulate the vagus nerve on the ear with a TENS unit, um, just a little electrical stimulation. Um, but at home, things you can do right away are some deep breathing and, and some gargling, some humming, um, just to help decrease that vagus nerve. So again, vagus nerve is a really, really important nerve. It's actually my favorite nerve. Um, it, it's involved in so many things and we really should be taking care of it. We really should be eating healthy um, so that, that we can help decrease inflammation and we can help really allow that rest and digest system to occur. Um, things you can do to activate it, just you know, look them up. There's plenty of things. And we do a lot of those here indirectly, but there's a lot of things that you can do right at home to help yourself and help that vagus nerve. So thank you for tuning in today on this episode of Ask Dr. Nick. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, if you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave your comments below. Um, I'm more than happy to, to listen and to answer your questions. Um, so again, stay healthy. Thanks.